economy may affect to the culture and society in every country around the world. It is limiting us from our direct social interaction and humankind and force to transform most of all their activity, the social activity into virtual based activity. Facing this challenge as the Muslim, first of all, we have to go back to our fundamental way of life. The way before COVID-19 even exists in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already provide us Al-Quran and Hadith as the most comprehensive and never expired guideline for all mankind. Allah through Quran and has told us to live, to live and live a halal lifestyle. Moreover, as Rasulullah wasallam said in Hadith Rewayat Muslim, in this pandemic situation, eyes of the world are start to open more wider regarding halal lifestyle. People are start to seeking healthier way of life, with all the requirements fulfilled by halal lifestyle nowadays. The demand of halal product is increasing, even non-Muslim majority country. You can see in the ice cream, top luxury hijab. Yes, number one, Burberry's. You can see also uh, Gucci, Ch Chanel, and others, even Versace. We, we reserve number nine and ten, maybe it's coming from Indonesia. This worldwide phenomenon might be reflected from the announcement of recommendation from WXO that said to say to stay away from the virus and to live a healthy life we should avoid consumption of wild animals, alcohol, and stop smoking. One good example, Robin Sensen already announced the governor to stop consume, consume the wild animal and uh, also uh, processing is not a cleanliness, cleanliness and healthy process. In this situation, a business owner should train a grip regarding the very, their business. Following the signal we found from the research and dinner standard in the in 2020, it should reform, return, and reinvent. Business owners should be ready to shift into more digitalized business because the technology and digital literacy could be the key to the sustainability of the business. Allah said, Allah said in Surah Shah or in Sirah, but in Nama Usri Yusra. In Nama Usri Yusra, in every difficulty Allah already provided you in ease. This pandemic has passed ten years of evolution of our digital. I believe it is high time for all of us to further explore the halal industry's potentials as one of the efforts to stimulate post-pandemic economic recovery. Halal is also about promoting a healthy and sustainable lifestyle. Moreover, halal requirements have met many of the conventional quality standards such as ISO, Codex, Alimentarius, Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point, as well as good hygienic practice. And therefore, it is not surprising at all if the global halal industry is estimated to be worth around 2.3 trillion US dollars as per the Global Islamic Economic Report 2019 with progressive growth at approximately 5% annually. Furthermore, spending on the halal industry was valued at about 2.2 trillion US dollars in 2019 and it has become one of the biggest consumer segments in the world. These numbers come as a no surprise since the current global halal market is no longer confined to food and food related products. On halal food specifically, due to the rising concern of hygienic food and the COVID-19, consumers are becoming increasingly aware that non-halal food and food that is not processed in a hygienic manner have great potentials to cause diseases. This understanding gives halal food a new popularity because people are now equalizing halal food with healthy 
and hygienic food. Uh, it's a total of US dollars 1.4 trillion in 2018 and is forecasted to reach 2.0 trillion US dollars by 2024. Muslim-friendly tourism was valued at 189 billion US dollars in 2018 and by 2024 is estimated to grow to 274 billion US dollars. Apparel and footwear is projected to grow to 402 billion US dollars by 2024. Halal pharmaceutical was 92 billion US dollars in 2018 and is projected to grow to 134 billion US dollars by 2024. And the last but not the least, Halal Cosmetics is forecasted to reach 95 billion US dollars by 2024. In general, the numbers show that the halal industry is one of the fastest growing consumer segments in the world and establishing it as an increasingly important footing in the global economy, driven by increasing consumers demand worldwide. For Indonesia, as the world's largest popul Muslim population, we have a huge potential to become a big global player. Unfortunately, Indonesia has yet to maximize its potential, representing roughly only 10% of the, seven, 20, of the 2017 global spending with only 3.8% of related exports. We have yet to become a producer in the global halal market. As stated by President Joko Widodo during the inauguration of Halal Park in 2019, this halal market is such a huge market that we cannot miss out on. Therefore, this is the right time for us to introduce our products. Indeed, we cannot miss out this timely opportunity. Honorable distinguished speakers and participants, three ways of approach in dealing with the challenges posed by COVID-19, and those are adapt, adjust, and transform. With regard to Maxi, I believe that as an already comprehensive and well-planned strategy, it needs to consider these three ways of approaches to make it more enhanced, relevant, and agile with the current dynamics and challenges of COVID-19. Pandemic provides not only hardship and challenges, but also, which pa Sapta already eloquently emphasized, opportunities to find new sector to stimulate economic recovery. Halal sector and digital economy are among the blessings in disguise during this pandemic. Even though COVID-19 has prevented a robust movement of people, but it did not stop the movement of goods and services. This presents larger opportunity for digital halal industry to thrive during pandemic. First, elaborative program with clear target and time frame. Complicated challenges need comprehensive approach. Comprehensive approach would definitely need strong collaboration. It is important to establish well-defined time frame with a focus on elaborated specific program in the master plan that are achievable in certain period of time in order to sell, accelerate the progress. Collaboration is crucial in this effort. And today's event is an excellent example of such much needed collaboration. Second, database information. On this point, I would like to also draw your attention uh, that some of the participants are from our missions abroad. On this point, it is understood that to be able to mapping opportunities of the global halal market, I'm of the view that we should encourage research and market intelligence. With a more accurate and clear data, we would be able to better understand policies and regulations for better Sharia finance implementation, ways to advance halal standardization and certification, as well as improving halal value chain for our products. In this regard, I believe that our 132 Indonesian missions abroad would be excellent partners as they are the eyes and the ears in designated markets. Our missions abroad could provide information needed for our halal industry to grow and they could be a bridge and facilitator to help open new cooperation with the designated foreign partners. My third point is enhancing SME's capacity in digital era. 
I believe, I, I think I have mentioned this uh, earlier, the importance of digitalization for SMEs. I would like to mention in this regard, Bank Indonesia has continuously maintained their policy to support and equip SMEs with instruments needed for the competition in the digital arena, such as certification, finance support, financial support, as well as training program. However, we need more and stronger support in these matters to better prepare SMEs in the next normal. My last but not least point, establishing and implementing a communication strategy to promote our halal industry. A communication strategy by maximizing the digital media, it is very significant both as a means of promotion and also as a way to increase awareness on the achievements, opportunities, as well as challenges in advancing our halal industry. Honorable distinguished speakers and participants, we need to transform our thinking and build a comprehensive strategy so that the Islamic economy and finance could become the new wave of economy to boost economic growth. Based on State Global Economic Report 2019-2020, I think as explained by Bu Ina before, uh, the consumption spending of the global Islamic economy in various sector uh, will growing up, I think, until 2024. Yeah. And there are uh, several sectors which are predicted uh, to fuel the growth of Islamic economic and finance. Among others, uh, we note here halal food, more fashion, media recreation, Muslim friendly travel, halal pharmacy, and also halal cosmetics. With such great potential, I think many countries will compete to develop the Islamic economy and finance, even if they are not Muslim major country. I think we can take a look at Thailand and South Korea, for example. They pay serious attention to develop, uh, to develop of uh, Muslim-friendly tourism. Thailand has declared uh, their country as a world halal kitchen. And South Korea declare themselves as the world Muslim friendly tourist destination. Other non-Muslim countries such as China had also had produced huge amount of Muslim fusion items. And we take a look also UK had become the Islamic finance hub of the West. For that Muslim country must not be left behind. We have you know to add fun on in this area. As the largest Muslim majority country, Indonesia has a great potential to become a major player in the halal industry. The, the prospect of the figure is reasonable enough, I think, as Indonesia has uh, several endowments uh, in endowment factors in this area. Uh, I think we can take a look on from the demand side, for example. The majority of Indonesia population, uh, population are Muslim. Indonesian Muslim population is around about 13% of the world Muslim population. I think this is big enough. And there are more than 20,000 Islamic boarding schools, or we call it, uh, we call it Pesantren in Indonesia, which more than around 2 million Islamic students or Santri. Also, majority of Indonesian population are millennials. This is very important uh, in the uh, uh, digital area, who could be the driving force of innovation in developing halal product. And now, if we take a look from the supply side, we have adequate Islamic financial institution and various potential halal sector. Uh, we take note here, there are 14 commercial Sharia bank, uh, 20 Sharia business unit, and 164 Sharia rural bank all across Indonesia. There are also roughly more than uh, uh, 4,500 microfinance institutions of Vital Mal Watamwil operating in Indonesia. Those financial institutions would be uh, very, uh, beneficial for halal sector as the source of financing, of course. In the real sector, the fashion industry, like in Bandung, has a good demand from other countries, especially from uh, Malaysia. 
So it has a great potential to be developed further. I'm sure uh, many uh, many other region we also have special model that could be developed further. In this pandemic, uh, pandemic situation, from in uh, Bank Insa research, uh, we have research, uh, especially in the area of financial sector, that food and beverage industry are performing well even in, uh, under the COVID uh, era. Uh, and this area, uh, and this uh, sector has low risk and had, uh, and had good prospect. Uh, I think this is also supported by you know uh, the uh, the sufficient credit sufficient credit from from the banks. Thus, I think this is a sector has a good potential to be transfer into to be transformed uh, into main sector of halal industry. With this background. We understand that the development of Islamic economic and financial require a comprehensive and integrative approach. In order to catalyze the development of the Islamic economy and finance as a new source of economic growth, National Islamic Economic and Finance Committee connects, including uh, Bank Indonesia, of course, here, introduced the framework of Sharia economic and financial development. I think we Ina has also mentioned before as the Maxi Abu Ina as the guidance to develop Islamic economic and financial sector. Under the and under this framework, there are three strategy as the main uh, pillars of Sharia economic and financial development. The first pillar is uh, empowering Islamic economy through Islamic boarding school, pesantren, Islamic uh, MSME and corporates, manufacturing industry of food, fashion, cosmetic, tourists, and pharmacy, along with halal industry campaign, leading to the halal value chain ecosystem. The second pillar is accelerating Islamic financial market uh, deepening to strengthen liquidity management and Islamic uh, uh, financing. And the third pillar is empowering research and assessment and education. I think that is uh, also the important uh, pillar that uh, you know to develop Islamic economic and finance. Uh, if we took a look uh, at the framework, the three pillars are in uh, uh, in integrated uh, strategy. The first one, empowering Islamic economics uh, through development halal value chain on the first pillar is spotted by second pillar, which is Islamic financial market deepening consists of commercial and social finance. I think this is very important uh, to combine the commercial and the social uh, Islamic finance. The development of the first and the second pillar are supported by the third pillar with the strengthening research, assessment, and education. I think we still uh, uh, need for the uh, uh, heart here with uh, doing a research and assessment and education uh, around this uh, pillar. At the first phase, we will implement this framework with focus on five priority sector, which cover integrated farming, food, fission, renewable energy, and Muslim-friendly tourism. For Bank Indonesia itself, we believe that uh, this effort will be finished here as those initiatives will fulfilling our mandate, Bank Indonesia mandate, that is maintaining inflation and generating foreign exchange reserve. That's, uh, of, uh, of course, this is important for the stability of the exchange rate. There are at least four actions that could be conducted. The first is to create a branding of halal. I think this is very important thing to how to brand uh, halal. We need to build a sufficient understanding to the people regarding halal product. For example, in the halal food, we need to rebrand that the halal food is the healthy food. I think we has also mentioned uh, before, halal is uh, healthy. This is very important so that uh, everyone that, uh, you know, uh, uh, take a look, uh, there is a restaurant with the label halal. It means that the restaurant is healthy. Muslim-friendly tourism could also be imitated as the clean tourism. I think it is uh, in line with our uh, our faith, our iman, that cleanness is part of our iman. And for the vision, we could describe Islamic modest vision is beauty. Is beauty. 
I think Pak Sabto is also men- mentioned before. The second is building cooperation. Bank Indonesia is committed to develop the business unit of Islamic Boarding School or Pesantren as well as Islamic MSME through several programs. Together with the government and Wakaf national body, we, def- uh, we have developed cash Wakaf Lim support. This instrument basically is the integration of social and commercial uh, financing. I think uh, so far, uh, funding from social is is uh, is not usually uh, uh, maximized. I think uh, we can use uh, more optimal on the social uh, social fund that should be linked to the commercial activity. I think this is very important, as uh, we are aware that I think the major the majority of Indonesian people are eager to make a donation. I think with uh, this uh, uh, characteristic. We could encourage social fund from the donation to be more productive through cash wakaf link suko instruments to finance, for example, hospital development or other projects. And the fourth action uh, that is related to the current situation is digitalization. Halal value chain needs to be collaborated with a digital fr- uh, approach. Bank Indonesia hand to hand with halal uh, creative industry. Uh, had already built an integrated platform, uh, we call it ICRA. Since 2018, this uh, digital platform uh, serves as a digital uh, storefront to showcase and to, pro- uh, to promote various high-quality Sharia products that have been curated by professional. Until the end of uh, 2019, ICRA had already uh, collected high-quality products from MSME in seven provinces. We will continue to develop this platform so that it uh, it cover uh, all uh, the product in all uh, provinces in Indonesia. The presence of the ICRA is expected to encourage an increase in sale transaction of various high quality Sharia product to support the development of Islamic MSME. The fast growing Islamic fintech could uh, support the area of uh, in the area of uh, financing i think this is uh, uh, as, uh, as we know that uh, uh, fintech in the uh, sharia area is uh, na- right now is growing very very fast the dis- uh, the decision of the islamic financing could be done through the collaboration between micro islamic financing institution we call it uh, baitul mall but watam mill and islamic fintech uh, like a smartphone uh, via smartphone application, of course we can use it. Uh, until July to uh, 2020, in Indonesia there are more than uh, around 50 Islamic fin- uh, fintechs, which already disperse Islamic financing of nearly around four trillion rupiah. Those are for action that uh, we we see as an important strategy to ensure the development of halal business. The digital economy steadily rise in the past few years, but what this pandemic has actually done is it's pushed the growth even further by, you know, showing us how dependent we all are on the digital tools and the platforms. The formula is actually simple. You need to understand the consumer market and the more inclined in the next generation of technology, right? Uh, if you look at the holistic approach of uh, the global Muslim consumer market, the median age uh, of these market is about 24. So with that, one thing is clear. If you want to tap into the market for now and to the future, you have to be staying up to date to the new generation. So don't stay away from building your, you know, global consumer market. You know, you have to be on top of it. You have to build the future of the technology as you, you know, as, as uh, the businesses don't have a complete dependency uh, in itself, it, it needs to rely, com- uh, you know, as we move on towards the technology rack. So, all these things, all these problems that's actually arised uh, and the gap that's been created and is going to be uh, solved through this technology, giving rise to the new halal business models uh, with greater digital frameworks, uh, which will really bring strengthening uh, your own businesses and makes a backbone of your growth in, in, your, in your sector of these economies. So the new business model and technology, both regular and track you know, it, it's completely interacting with each, each other. We have seen that, uh, that recently with the halal food delivery system, for example, 
uh, one example, if I can just randomly pick up, it's been about 50,000 new halal food delivery apps has been launched uh, between last one year, uh, especially in the last six months, which says that there's a huge potential of how these new businesses are adapting. And out of which about 2,000 are halal, halal focused businesses. So that means uh, a lot of attraction has already started building up globally in the global Islamic economy. Uh, for me, uh, as Albert S. Einstein once said, you know, we cannot actually solve our problems with the same thinking that we actually created uh, with the same the problem when we actually created them. So we cannot solve the problem with the outdated or the existing technologies either, right? We need to sit and analyze what technologies can be the disruption in the next few years and accordingly start building up. Uh, if you can jump on the next slide, please. Top 10 halal tech disruptions is what probably I'll just touch upon heavily. Uh, I'll rush through because we have uh, a little time. Uh, I have a lot of things to share, but here is the prediction of 10 technologies that will actually transform the global halal ecosystem by 2025. With so many technologies that's actually emerging with so many in different fronts, right? It's, it's really challenging to keep it up. Now you need to really pick up these a few of these technologies that fits into your business combination, right? From combining our research with McKinsey reports and then our subject matter experts, we have compiled a list of 10 technologies and how these are actually going to transform the ecosystem, right? Not every emerging technology will alter your business or the social landscape, but some truly have the potential to disrupt. It, it's going to create a new status quo in your landscape. So uh, let's talk about uh, quickly between one to 10, right? Mobile internet uh, te technologies by 2025, uh, mobile connectivity in the Muslim consumer market will really reach about 1.2 billion. That's the prediction. And it could easily access by an additional 4.3 billion users, devices, people's touch points or internet of devices outside the Muslim consumer market. So uh, you'll have to start thinking where the consumer is actually heading. So start building solutions towards it. Now, uh, number two, artificial intelligence, machine learning and the user interfaces uh, such as the speed and gesture recognition is really changing how things are being identified. For example, Tertil app uses AI to provide the live feedback on the Quran recitation. You just recite it and it gives you live feedback instantly, right? These are the AI technologies that will advance to into the new productivity solutions in, in, in the ecosystem. Talking about uh, number three, the virtual uh, and the augmented reality. This is a 80 billion market by 2025 and it's going rapidly. You've uh, definitely seen the virtual uh, Becca tools where, you know, uh, it's picking up momentum already with VR Hajj, Umbra, similar to working with, you know, uh, Oculus Rift and similar devices. Now, it's been also used by, say, Saudi government and the Pakistani government. Uh, and, and I believe very much uh, Indonesia is also experimenting with this, where they're training using AR and VR uh, for the pil pilgrimage. You know, we at Collabdeen have also built the whole holistic AR kit where we can, you know, see nearby halal restaurants, uh, hotels, masjids, musallas around you, qibla finder, everything through one interface, which is the augmented. And that's the direction where, you know, the whole uh, objective of the transformation is going to happen. Now talking about a bit on cloud, I'll touch upon one of the biggest buzzwords that's actually uh, creating in the last decade. And it's continued to evolve. You know, every halal business is now utilizing a lot of cloud solutions and there will be a rise in the cloud solutions uh, in, in this market. Uh, Internet of Things, more than about 500 million devices of about 2 billion Muslims currently are uh, you know, connected onto the internet. That means this number is actually uh, definitely going to grow between 2 billion to nearly 4 billion in the next decades because uh, every, every uh, person and uh, every individual is having at least two devices or four devices or different touch points. Uh, that's definitely an, an area uh, you'll have to see how you can implement uh, your set of scope of uh, solutions from your business market using these advanced technologies. Now, another important uh, is uh, importance of, uh, you know, advanced robotics. Halal certifying bodies are already looking into how they can actually get into the advancing the AI for, you know, uh, with mission vision, uh, sensors, motors, hydraulics and materials. This will completely change the uh, the dynamics of these ecosystems. This will change the way products and services are delivered for this Muslim consumer market. Uh, now, biometric technology, halal tourism is on the rise due to pandemic, it's been put down. Now, this is a real opportunity for halal tourism to sit back and re-strategize 
uh, where do they go from here uh, to, to by 2025 right this is one of the things biometric technology is going to really uh, add more value here a recent survey revealed that 72% of companies are planning to drop traditional passwords by 2025 that means uh say for example this can be very much utilized in a place where you know hajj and umrah travels that's happening uh say or, or the reg- regular halal travel that's been planned uh where these technologies can be mapped even before traveling to the new places you know through this uh, biometric technologies uh, a lot of things can be processed and automated to save a lot of uh, time and uh, efforts for both the consumer and the businesses uh jumping on uh, 3d printing like we have recently seen in the news uh, you know uh, in salam gateways uh fake meat was created using 3d printing technologies what does it mean is uh, a lot of people are trying to build something that in, but they're not rightly into the positive focus so this is an opportunity for our halal ecosystem to really take up a positive step use 3D, 3d printing technology that's going to be one of the most important thing of the future uh bring up counter positive products for this consumer market it could be anything in the, in, in this space uh it it's really it requires a lot of brainstorming and uh, you know a market research to go on from here now genomics uh halal genetic engineering technologies will really grow faster with the computer processing speed uh dna sequencing technologies and advanced analytics will improve the agriculture the halal agriculture sector is really booming up there the meat processing dna sampling of food products will give you uh, that halal authorities or uh and you know an authenticity to drive the halal certifying bodies towards you know giving a complete solution where uh, with new technologies things can be uh, very positively approached in, into this market now uh the last one uh blockchain we have all seen blockchain buzz in is almost you know going across uh, uh, from halal expos to uh, a non halal expos uh, things have been very positive in this direction blockchain is the best known in the context of say virtual currency uh, with, especially with bitcoin and recent reports showed 64 different use cases of blockchain uh, how many use cases have been identified for this global islamic economy i think that's something that we all have to start thinking and up implementing uh, the blockchain uh, for the positivity of this ecosystem now the whole task is you know streamlining and securing uh, uh, uh securing con- uh, secure contracting and transacting will uh drive the commercial use for uh, the blockchain there are millions of caps in this market i think uh which certainly be bridging with deep technology and collaboration you know uh the whole ecosystem will have to start thinking more strategically uh, uh saying what what do we do in next 3 years next 5 years and next 10 years how technology is strategically aligned with the vision long term vision it's important to put your organization's roadmap for 3 years 5 years 10 years build a community around that build products around that and build ecosystem around that only then you'll be able to you know start mapping it uh, and able to you know uh, take diversions if at all things like pandemic uh, touch would not happen again but uh, any kind of ecosystem breakage uh, it'll be a, you know a planned move for uh, your uh, next slide please so remember uh, as i mentioned deep tech on mobiles and collaboration are the two focus area you'll need to hold on to Uh, we are moving from you know the information age to be more of a uh, collaboration age your approach should be mobile first uh, develop a more into deep technologies that will help you uh, scale up your whole business model and collaborate that is when you know things can go up uh, and in the faster way uh, next slide please uh, the next example i would like to give you is this particular thing that we are sitting in this islamic uh, in indonesia sharia uh, economy festival right this is and a good example of how how new technologies have been you know adapted by the people i i believe we are about 1000 people watching on zoom and online so this is going to go go more popular i halal expo is another thing that just happened uh i halal expo 2020 is another great example of building a global virtual halal expo globally i would not go into detail of it but this is an, a vision where you know a lot of collaborations is happening there's no barriers there is no geographical ba- barriers or language barriers coming through uh uh and defining redefining how technology is uh, resetting all the things uh next slide please so we all know that uh, you know uh global islamic economy is the only faith based multi trillion dollar market very much widely uh, getting popular uh 24 years is the median age in this ecosystem with about 650 million millennials so your strategy should be also catering to these millennials 
uh, I believe you know coronavirus will change the way the world sees the business does the businesses in the in this space businesses will be forced to rethink their global value chains will will reshape uh, it'll shape be shaped to maximize the efficiency and uh, profitability in this space so uh, it's I've also defined, if you can go to the next slide, please, uh, four key steps to build halal ecosystem, right? On the on the bottom line, uh, where a lot of tech visions have been taken care, uh, uh, the leaderships and the winning team has to, you know, fundamentally look how the next layer of vision is laid out using technology, a technology and the technological collaboration, which is kind of very critical success factor for moving ahead from here, where you can manage churns and the growth of your whole ecosystem. Uh, on the top, definitely with all these things happening with technology, the partnerships will kind of rebuild, re-strategize and your partnerships are not just going to happen with the local geographies. You'll start thinking much at a larger scale, the global scale and the, the 2 billion and the Muslim, uh, uh, 2 billion Muslims and the growing population. So with, uh, with the COVID, uh, we started to more giving focus on the product boost that are, you know, uh, immune boosters, ready to eat, ready to cook, because that's what the customers need right now. And definitely we have to move forward of expanding our presence in e-commerce and as well as the community base. And definitely this is the area where the digital marketing becomes uh, more and more important uh, than previous because basically everybody stays at home and everybody is relying on the digital um, access uh, to see what are the products they need. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so these are some of the examples that we start focusing on the products that are methods for the consumers uh, because that it gives us the leverage uh, turning the COVID pandemic into something that is useful because with this situation, everybody needs to eat healthy. Everybody needs to boost their immunity system and the only way they can do that is by consuming healthy food products. Can we uh, go next? Please? Yes, this is just an example. We can uh, skip that. Um, and we also do bundling products and we also encourage to do social discounts, uh, especially for products that we also give out to the medical team. Next, please. And uh, this is interesting because we are also receiving inquiry from consumers with autoimmune who are more vulnerable during the COVID because it turns out that it, was, it has been very difficult for them to find products that are safe. So they needed a transparent product that are traceable and they know exactly what are the ingredients that allow them to consume it in a safe way for their condition. Next, please. So um, this is the interesting part because we receive a lot of demand for products that are, you know, nutritionist practical because with the work from home, everybody has, has to juggle between still doing work from home but at the same time doing the home course so any food products that are easy to prepare practical is you know um, is a must basically as a selection uh, next please so this is the interesting part i think the indonesians they love fried things so cooking oil is always you know a must in our pantry but this is the interesting part we are pushing the coconut cooking oil because indonesia has 30% of the world population of coconuts. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this coconut oil is also good for boosting the immunity system and put as a medicine. Um, so this is interesting because after the uh, pandemic, our sales of organic certified coconut cooking oil, you know, um, grow so much um, up to 200%. So this is interesting to see that people are starting looking into healthier products. Next, please. But at the same time, uh, people are also conscious about costs because with the pandemic, people, there are so many uncertainty. So even when, when we are offering the coconut cooking oil, we try to make it uh, relevant for the consumers. So we have a product that is safe for them to reuse the coconut cooking oil for six times. Can we go next, please? We just skip the video for this. We can, yeah. So I'm just going, uh, also going to give you an example um, on how we use the technology in allowing our consumers to understand where their food comes from and tracking the traceability and the quality of it. Honey is one of the popular products during the COVID, but and then we receive questions. People are questioning, is it uh, pure? 
um, where does it comes from? Is it raw, um, unaltered? So this is something that we can answer by creating a traceability platform. So uh, can we play the video, please? So basically, we are putting the QR code in each jar to allow the consumers to trace where it comes from. So, so this is the interesting part. Since everybody's at home and sometimes they are bored and they don't know what kind of activity they need to have uh, with their kids. So we also provide a do-it-yourself experience on Indonesia food culture, which uh, during the COVID we launched um, Mari Menempe package, do-it-yourself tempe, so that you can do it at home. So at the same time, you are also nutrifying the family, but also creating an activity that you can do together with your children. So probably you can um, play the video a bit on this. So basically, we're combining of having a good offer of the products, but we are also using the digital tools like the QR code, uh, the digital marketing to promote this. Can we uh, move to the next slide, please? So we also, this is the interesting part on the supply chain because we also provide our classes on food photography, on photography and videography to our farmers, which allow them to create digital story. This is important because right now, uh, the most effective, efficient way for us to promote the products is through digital marketing. And it means we need something attractive. Everybody realize that anything visual, anything that with videos attracts more attention rather than just words. Um, so this is a, just an example where the photo are basically taken by the farmers. All we need to do is just to assemble them together. Can we play this a bit? And the, the class is also done online. I took the data from uh, Pak Yuswahadi and team. Uh, the ebook created by uh, the, uh, Pak Yuswahadi and team. So Pak Yuswahadi Pai Yuswa, Pai and team point, point out four consumer behavior shift during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The first one is uh, stay at home uh, lifestyle, lifestyle, a new lifestyle, working, living, studying, playing at home because of the social distancing. The second, uh, the second one, uh, empathetic, empathetic uh, society. So the, uh, the large numbers of casualties due to COVID-19 creating a society full of empathy, compassion, and social soli solidarity. So the third one is going virtual or going uh, digital. So COVID-19 makes con consumers avoid physical contact. They switch from conventional way to uh, virtual or digital. And the fourth one, uh, focus on the bottom of uh, Maslow's uh, pyramid. So consumers are now shifting their needs to basic food, health, and safety. So uh, Pak Yusuhadi and team also derived uh, this consumer behavior shift into 30 predictions that uh, might be useful for the halal business practitioner to get insight or the business idea. Uh, we can see on the table, on the slide. So, um, following up the shifting, how about Indonesian readiness? So, I, I identified three facts here that might uh, show that Indonesia is uh, ready. So, we can see from the figure one, 
uh, mobile phone connection in Indonesia is about 338.2 million is about uh, 124% of the population internet user uh, 175 million is 64% of the population and active in social media users uh, it's uh, 160 million is about eight, uh, 50, 59% of the population so uh, the next one in the table two, Indonesia is one of the most uh, in the figure two. I'm sorry, Indonesia is one of the most generous country in the world. Entered in the top ten, yeah, based on the uh, World Giving Index 2019. And uh, zakat in Faksodako funds, this fund collected in 2018, reached about 8.11 uh, trillion, while the potential is estimated about. 233 trillion is uh, from Basnas in 2019 and this fund in Indonesia grew by average of 36.2% uh, per year uh, during the period of 2002 to 2019 and then uh, the, uh, the third figure show that the, show the uh, financial inclusion in Indonesia has grown significantly from time to time uh, it has reached seven, uh, 76% data from OJK in 2019 uh, while the target is 90% in uh, 2023. Uh, yeah, from this slide, we can conclude that COVID-19 pandemic uh, has changed the consumer behavior and Indonesian halal business uh, is ready actually and need to adjust uh, the business accordingly. So next, please. So on this slide, uh, going forward, I would like to introduce about Link Aja and Link Aja Syariah and what we are doing to support halal business in Indonesia. Referring to Indonesian Syariah Digital Economic Ecosystem uh, defined by the government, Link Aja Syariah Service is collaborating with uh, partners in developing Syariah Digital Economic and Financial uh, ecosystem yeah to complete to complete the ecosystem yeah especially uh, we take part in the interaction or the transaction between the merchant and also the retail uh, retail buyer which is the end users yeah yeah as we can see from the slide we are developing uh, regular uh, use cases and ecosystem shown uh, in red in red color we got uh, we've got telecommunication uh, on, on offline merchant e-commerce here ppob payment transportation uh, social funds spbu spbu is a gas station uh, local merchant 1 million uh, cash in cash out and ppob points health uh, service attraction and entertainment uh, and also uh, traditional market we got more than 500 uh, traditional market already join us our, our ecosystem and also we uh, we also uh, developing a specific sharia uh, uh, use cases and ecosystem here we can show in the green color uh, education uh, islamic school and pesantren and then uh, Islamic Social Fund, Zakat, uh, Infak, Sodakoh, then Wakaf, and then uh, local government uh, which concerned with uh, Sharia or interest uh, have in, uh, have interest in Sharia uh, implementation, and then Kurban, and then here we also uh, collaborating with e-commerce that have uh, halal section corner and then Islamic finance uh, financing insurance investment we also uh, trying to complete it and then uh, halal merchant here including the SMEs the MSMEs and then uh, masjid ecosystem yeah most uh, almost for thousand uh, most across the country so these are uh, products that we are developing currently, gold saving, uh, hajj and umrah saving, and 
The third one is uh, biometric technology to support the uh, pesantren and also the bansos, yeah, the social assistance later on. So up until 30 of September 2020, uh, 2020 alhamdulillah, Ling Aja Syariah Service has reached about uh, 855,000 registered user. Uh, consists of the uh, consists of uh, 24% from tier one big cities uh, and uh, 76% from uh, uh, tier two and tier three uh, cities. Yeah. Okay. Next. Yeah. Yeah. That's all from us actually. So thank you for the attention. I hope that uh, my presentation uh, will give you. Uh, insight and also be useful for your uh, halal business.